I gotta pull away and protect myself if I peep that you're on some sh- on some bullshit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if I if I notice, and I'm much quicker to the red flags now. Like I'm much more aware of the red flags. I'm much more aware of myself. I really, really wanted to give my fans music. I missed being able to give tangible art from me because that's that's what I do. So I've been working on this music for like a couple years now. So just having something out and giving people something in the midst, uh, well, regardless of in the midst, you know, I figured art is still something that people can use right now as a comfort. I didn't really question continuing it, but 50 feet, I think is also like coincidentally appropriate. (laughs) Have I always had a good bullshit radar? Absolutely not. I had to develop my bullshit radar. I was very naive as a young person as well because I have a big, big, big heart. And so I would just kind of let people trample me. I've always been aware, I'm empathic, so I'm very aware of people's feelings, but I didn't understand that before. Like, I just thought I was crazy. In the writing process even was like solidifying my truth and solidifying like, no, like I'm not allowing that to affect my family is first and foremost in my click. And then probably my, like I have two best friends. When I say click, I also mean just the people I allow around me. I'm not stingy with sharing my energy if I believe that you're like a dope person and I resonate with you. I, I'm pretty open and loving to anyone off that, you know? When I say not in touch, I mean spiritually aligned. Like they're not in touch with themselves or reality or the idea of consciousness or empathy or compassion. And they're just kind of like flailing around the planet in a super narcissistic way. I think this is another skill I've developed is being able to know when I need to pull away from a situation. I was very codependent before in that I felt like I needed to be of service at all times and other people's feelings and comfortability was more important than my own. And I would sacrifice my own sanity a lot of times and my own emotional well-being and my own physical well-being to please others and to make them happier than I was. Cause I thought that that's what love meant, but it's not like self-sacrifice is not love. Love is taking care of yourself and showing up as your full complete self so that you can give your overflow to another being. If the person that I'm involved with, whether it be a friendship, family member, a relationship, romantic, whatever, if they're not giving me back what I'm giving to them, I've definitely gotten used to having to push the negativity to the side. I used to allow the negativity to define me. It fed my insecurity, you know what I mean? Like like reading negative comments or reading comments from people who are incredibly insecure in, in their own right to even be on the internet commenting on someone else's life. That in itself, I came to realize like these people don't know me. When there's people in real life even, our realities are all different from the others, you know? And our perspectives are all unique. And it's a skill that I'm still developing, but I've gotten so much better at. This song I feel like is even me talking to myself and reiterating these things to myself. Specifically, I feel like I got in touch with the whole mind, body, soul elements of life. It's your mind and your body and your spirit and how they're working with each other and whether that's aligned or not. Because I was raised Catholic and then I lost faith for a long time, but I did believe in like a lot of what I had read and learned about Jesus and what his message was, which was of love. So I always resonated with that, but then I kind of lost sense of direction and, and, and connection to spirit. I was always very quick like inquisitive about the world and always like why and i don't think catholicism could answer a lot of those whys so i lost myself and then i refound myself in my teen years i think i was 17 or 18 when i had like a real 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 moment with god or an ancestor or whoever i don't really know who it was i was like holding my hands up and i felt like a hand in my hand and just kind of like put it down and just kind of like reassure me. And that changed that changed my whole entire life. And 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 so I just really realigned with spirit and just got got to work on myself and started getting to work on like my purpose. You know? It's just like back up. Back up for me. I need more than 50 feet of space. It's just a reiteration, I feel like, of of the message. Don't, don't come too close. Translated, that means I light a white candle. Abuelita, my grandmother. I ask for protection. Ven cuidame, like take care of me. Sounds so much prettier in Spanish, but. (laughs) Come take care of me when the world takes my faith away from me. Or when the world doesn't believe in me is another way to, to translate it. When I lose belief in myself because the world has told me something. So it's like calling upon my ancestors to guide me and protect me and bring me light. I do a lot of candle work. It just amplifies my spiritual practice. So um, white candles are just like to amplify the angels and like the the light beings around me and and 
like equalize negative energy. As far as difficult conversations, like telling someone that you need space from them, <laughs> I've just got, I've gotten a lot better. I used to be really scared about confronting people and telling them how I really felt. And then that just made me suffer a lot emotionally. I've gotten much better at not accepting that anymore and just being honest and being open and being full on transparent when it comes to my feelings and, and what's going on within me. And while that's made me lose some people in my life, I've realized that I don't need anybody in my life that can't handle my truth. I don't need anybody around me that isn't going to respect and honor my feelings the way that I respect and honor theirs, you know? It depends on the level of like fuckery that this person has engaged in. You know what I mean? Like some people are incredibly deserving of a conversation because the love that you have for them and the love that you know that they have for you, regardless of like a petty human mistake,